Hey, my real, just happy Monday, y'all. So, I'm going to leave off. I only had a page left for chapter 14, and then we're going to go straight into 15. So, where, where was that? Hey, oh, what's up, Natasha? Hey, girl. Sorry I couldn't come to the phone. This nigga I fuck with. I fuck with up and got me. This nigga. <clears throat> I fuck with up and got. How that sound? This nigga I fuck with up and got married on me. I just feel like me and him were always going to be together. She sounded like she was crying. What kind? What had. What? We had had. Wait a minute, y'all. We had that kind of bond, and he didn't even tell me about that bitch. <clears throat> Fur wrote her ass. Anyway, I'm going to shoot it straight with you about something. Coconut don't fuck with you like that because she thinks you're going to say something about the accident. I will never say nothing about what happened that day, she said seriously. Maybe I should talk to her and see what's the problem. She don't want you calling. She specifically told me not to give you her number so just leave it alone natasha and maybe and make sure you don't say shit about the hit and run <clears throat> to nobody or that i told you she don't fuck with you if you do i'm not going to tell you nothing else trust me i wouldn't say nothing about the accident i really feel like i should say something when i see her about everything else though i've been knowing her for years She's going to run the shower, ain't she? <coughs> Hold up, y'all. Yeah, but I'm not sure that's appropriate shit. You feel me? Well, I find the right time to talk to her. I know you all, I know y'all are cool, but I'm not going to be right unless I tell her how I feel. <coughs> I love Coconut. She was the first person who looked out for me in school. I hope you understand that. I can't keep a secret like that. If she don't fuck with me, I want to know why. Fur was trying to think of ways to keep them apart. This was the biggest lie yet and could possibly backfire in her face. <clears throat> you can do whatever you want, but I think you, you'll you be playing yourself. So when she curried the fuck out of you, don't come running to me. It's fine. But like I said... I love her and I don't want her thinking I'm no snitch or not her friend. Far wrote her eyes and smacked her tongue. Natasha wasn't as naive as she thought. Anyway, I'm thinking about letting you live here with me since you want to move out your folks' house. For real, she said excitedly. What about Coconut? I thought she was moving with you. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't like how she treats you and Rhonda. <coughs> You think I'm playing because I'm with her all the time, but I'm dead serious. When I heard her talking sideways, I said if she talks about bad about you, she'll do it to me. You got to be able to pay your rent, though. I got it. Don't worry about that. First, you got to help me with something else. If shit works out, me and you both could earn a little paper. I'm down when. Meet me over my house in an hour. I'm on my way. <clears throat> okay, we on chapter 15. That was the last ending before I um, had to um, go from 14. So, chapter 15. Okay, let me go. Ooh, that's a long chapter. Ooh. But we got to get through it, y'all. Chapter 15. You were the best we ever had, baby. All we trying to do is have a little fun before we part ways further. Fur was lying in bed with Tank, playing, praying he wouldn't open his eyes. She was anxious and uncomfortable because his room was extremely hot. So hot that her nose felt dry on the inside, causing her to rub it back and forth. Laying face to face with him, she held her nose when she smelled the stink of his morning breath. Due to all the weed smoking, he indulged in the night before. Sweat pulled off his husky body and fell onto the clean sheet under him. 
perspiration surrounded his body as if he were chalked out at a crime scene. Ferb was trying to see her partner in crime on the floor from where she lay, but the room was mostly dark, with the exception of sunlight peeping from the corner of his dirty white blinds. Don't fuck this up, girl, she thought. Blinking several times, Ferb was finally able to see Natasha's um, shoes on the floor. <clears throat> Directly under his window, Natasha, completely naked, crawled on all fours as she looked for the money. Fur assured her was Fur assured her was in the house. <clears throat> if Tank woke up and saw her there, he will murder them both and not miss a day's sleep. Please don't get caught. Move slowly. <clears throat> Tank was a certified hood soldier. He had enough weapons in his apartment to stage a war. There were two forty fives. Of his two forty fives, there were two forty fives. His weapons of choice: a nine and a ten shotgun. When Fur originally hatched her plan to steal from him, she swore she thought things through. Now she understood that the knife she had tucked in her pillowcase under her head would not be enough to defend herself if things got out of hand. When Natasha bumped against the bed, Fur bit down on her lips and closed her eyes. Because she wasn't really asleep, her eyeballs moved rapidly under her lids. Lids. She just knew he was about to wake up and ask what the fuck was going on. A minute later, she opened her eyes and saw he was still asleep. She as hell. When the heat came back on, the stench of weed and sex roamed the room, roamed around the room. But his snores got louder, which indicated that he was fast asleep. In the event, he woke up. The plan was to tell him how he fucked both of them the night before and how much fun they had. <clears throat> the good thing about the plan was that Tank was 22, young, and unable to handle his liquor. Fur was banging on his curves of flow if they were caught red-handed. Natasha moved around quickly. Looking for the bag of gold, Fur said, was at the end of the hell hole. She would have looked for it herself, but whenever she stayed over, he had to hold her. So at the moment, his heavy hands rested on her yellow thigh, and whenever she moved, he would toss or turn. When Natasha located a bulging Dorito bag under his bed, she sat up against the wall and picked it up. Her large brown breast drooped freely, and her legs were wide open, shake, open. Shaking the bag, she knows it was too heavy to be holding chips. She smiled slyly at Fur. Opened the bag, and her eyes widened when she saw a wad of money inside. Bitch is right here, she whispered too loudly. Oh, position. Ugh. When she felt tight move, First slammed her eyelids shut. She couldn't believe Natasha could be so careless. To make matters worse, Tank's snore stopped. What which meant he wasn't in a deep sleep anymore. Her eyes remained shut for a minute, but when she opened them, he was stern in her direction. What you looking all crazy for? He stretched his arm and leg. What? I ain't dick you down hard enough last night? He yawned and his breath smelled like a pot of hot shit. I think you'd be knocked out. I think you'd be knocked out. He removed his hands from her thigh and rolled back on his side. If you ain't answering me, you must be asleep with your eyes open. Boy, ain't nobody sleep with their eyes open, she giggled. She was nervous and it showed. Then why you not answering my question? What'd you say again? He frowned. I said... Did I dick you down right last night? Fur could hear Natasha's soft whimpering in the background, and she was on the verge of paranoia. Why the fuck is this bitch crying? Yeah, the dick was official, baby. Why else would I come see your ass so as often as I do? It ain't like you cashing me out. You right about that, Tank said, rubbing his stomach. I don't pay a bitch shit for dick. 
so there we have it, Fur said. When she looked over his shoulder, she was angry. That instead of ducking. Huh? Natasha was stuck in a position with both hands over her mouth. But you better, but you better get some sleep because later, huh? But you better get some sleep because later she puts his fat fingers. She pushed his fat finger into her pussy. I might be up for round two. Damn, he said, stirring his finger like a spoon in a pot. Why you wet all of a sudden? Fur, fur pussy was always dry. But because it was so hot in the room, it was now drenched with sweat. He would normally have to eat her out just to get her wet enough to stick his dick in. You make me want to get some, some of that right now. Fur didn't want his large poker in her box. But at the moment, she didn't have a choice. At least he was preoccupied with what she had between her legs instead of the 45 under his pillow. My pussy is always wet when I'm with you. She moaned. He knew that wasn't the case, but he let her live anyway. She goes back. So go back to sleep and we'll start all over in a couple of hours. She closed her eyes, hoping he'd do the same. Nah, Reds, he said, pulling his finger out of her pussy. Then he hauled her then he hauled her on top of his body. I'm trying to bust. You done got me started now. The moment he was on his back and she was on top of him, Natasha softly hit the floor. If the room were a little if the if the room were lit a little better, he would be able to see her long brown legs on the left side of the bed. But the light was minimal in the moment at the moment, and Fur was grateful. Get it hard, Reds, he said, grabbing her hands and putting it putting it on putting it on his clampy penis, jerking so you can get me ready. But my arm hurt. Well make it wet then. He looked at her with your mouth. I jack you off, she said, reconsidering. Fur grabbed her long pole. Fur grabbed his long pole and slowly stroked it until he was stiff and ready to perform. Thanks, paint paint time. What was that? Yeah. Go get my stuff. I was right there. Tanks paint time. Moved around in the mouth, in his mouth. Two. Look. Close my door. Right, Tank's pink tongue moved around in his mouth, and his hairy chest moved up and down with each exhale. The tip of his dick oozed free cum and dripped on her fingertips. He was in ecstasy already. Come on, Ma, it's ready now. Suck that shit for me. I thought you wanted me to jack you all. Now I want something different. Fur didn't care about doing what was necessary, but she was, cons- but she was concerned he'd look to the- his left and see Natasha, who was doing an awful job of hiding. From where she sat on top of his body, she could see her clearly. Now she wished she hadn't suggested she'd get naked because if she created a diversion, N- Natasha could have crawled her ass all the way home. But without her clothes, she would do nothing. Come on, Tank, let me ride that shit, she said, jerking him harder. You done let me get you all ready, and now you not going to give me no dick? She shook her head as if it were un- unacceptable. Nah, babes, I'm going ha- I'm, I'm to have to hop on top of this black, big black motherfucker first. too much going on. He laughed, thinking she was really into him. Don't worry for her. I'ma say something for you, he said, breathing more into her, her, her face. But I'ma need them lips wrapped around this shit first. He snatched his dick greedily from her paws. All that other shit you told can wait. Come on, son, please, she whined. I want you to fuck me. Bitch, stop playing with me, he yelled. Your mouth way wetter than your pussy. In case you didn't know. 
he wasn't smiling anymore, and it was obvious. He, he reached the end of his patience. He wanted to come, and he wanted her to use her mouth to make him do it. Plus, fur could never move her body right, and her fuck game was off. If it weren't for her face and the fact that a rock of dudes in the hood wanted to fuck her, he would, have, he would never... He would not have given her the time of day. Now, suck my junk. And if you want me to pipe you down later, you got that. From the corner of her eye, she looked in Natasha's direction again and was enraged. She could still see her legs. Damn this bitch stupid. Why she ain't balled up instead of stretching out? Fuck. Now this nigga gonna kill both of us. Realized she needed her knife, she said, You mind if I suck it from the floor, baby? Or on the other side of the bed, I always work better on my knees. He wanted a blow giant. He didn't give a fuck how it was going to go down. All right, he frowned. But you making me mad now. I need you to hurry up and break me off. When he swung his legs around, when he swung his legs towards the side of the bed, Closest to Natasha, Fur felt faint. His feet were so close to her body. If he moved an inch, he would feel her warm skin. No, Fur screamed. Then she got on her knees on the opposite side of the bed. Away from her stupid friend. Let's do it over here. <laughs> Tank followed and looked down at her suspiciously. She was acting out of courage and he wasn't comfortable with the situation anymore. Looking into her brown eyes, he said, Fuck is up with you. And before you lie to me, you better know I ain't no sucker-ass nigga. I know you're not, baby, she said, giving him a half smile. Why are you fucking around? Bitch, don't make me break your neck. Now, what the fuck is up? I just want to do it over here, that's all. She was shaking so hard, her hair was trembling. Let's keep it light, tight. I know one thing, you, acting, you ain't acting right. He looked at her harder. Something is up. Tank, come on. She was working harder than ever. Ain't shit wrong. I'm just trying to have a little fun and wanted you on my side of the bed. That's all. Then she grabbed the pillow with the knife, tucked inside of it, and placed it under her knees in case she needed it. I'm going to do whatever you want. I just need you over here. That's all. Tank was young, but he was street smart and far from stupid. The drug, the drug game made him hard, and he learned he heard about bitches running game and setting niggas up all the time. He he just hoped he would never happen. It never happened to him. He was a foot soldier with no more on him than a couple of thousand at a time. But for a hood rat like her, looking to pay her rent, that was a good look. With both feet firmly on the floor, he stood up and looked down at her as she covered. She cowered on her knees. He stared. His stare was serious, and he and he meant business. Fuck is up, fur. She rose up until he said, "Did I tell you to stand?" She shook her head and dropped back to the floor. Now, are you going to tell me what you you up to, or do I have to find out for myself? Ugh. Tank, please. Tears came down her eyes. And she gave and she and gave her away, but he didn't give a fuck. I'm just trying to make you feel good. That's all. Why are you getting all different on all of a sudden? I don't believe you," he said as he was about to walk away from her. "Where you going?" she asked, pulling his hand. "Bitch, get the fuck off of me!" He walked away from her, and his neck swiveled to the opposite side of the room. From where he stood, he saw something out of the ordinary. Squinting, he grabbed his gun from under the pillar and moved towards the left side of the bed. Fur wanted to run, but her legs wouldn't even allow her to stand. This was, for, this was her fear, and she knew it. It was impossible that they, that they all would make it out of the situation alive. Naked with his gun aimed, Tank moved to the object on the floor. Then he opened the blinds and the entire room lit up as sunshine burst through the grimy windows. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw Natasha, balled up with her hands over her face. 
She was so scared that she actually thought they by hiding her eyes. He wouldn't be able to see her because she couldn't see him. Grabbing a fistful, fistful of her hair, he made her raise, rise to her feet. Open your mouth, he said. She did it. He pushed the burrow between her teeth like he like it was supposed to be there and clocked his gun. Now, who are you and what the fuck are you doing in my house? Um, I was... Remember, we all, uh, she was scared and lost the plan. Hurry up with the art. I don't know. Oh. Wait a minute. She was scared and lost the plan within the walls of her mind because of the gun in her mouth. How could she forget Fur had gone over it with her 20 times just to make sure it was done completely? Fur had told her, if this nigga wakes up and catches us in this house, tell him the three of us fucked the night before. He drank so much, girl, he won't remember. And now that it was time to show and prove, Natasha was plumbing up short. Bitch, I asked you a motherfucking question. Fuck is you doing in my house? Her pretty face produced a fake smile. Even though a gun rested between her teeth. You don't remember, Tank? We all had a little fun last night. She looked at Fur, but Fur looked away. She was on her own. Focusing back on the man who was gripping her head so hard she could hear her head tearing from the roots. She said, don't you remember? Nah, he frowned. I don't remember none of that shit. She's simper. Come on, tight. I sucked your dick for an hour. Then fur was riding you. We had a bowl last night. That's why I'm naked. Look at me, baby. Her, he eyed her naked flesh. She was working it now. And fur was hopeful that every everyone would make it out alive. The three of us did all that last night. The three of us did all that last night. He laughed, looking into her eyes. Yeah, we had a real good time too. Well, if that's the case, and we all were, and we all were together, then why the fuck you hiding? Uh, because I thought you would forget and and be mad, and I ain't want that. I heard how hard you are in these streets. She lied and he blushed. But can you please let my hair go tight? She could hear the soft cracking of her hair follicles being torn away. You're hurting me really bad. Before letting her go, he looked at her face, droopy titties, and long, pretty legs. If he didn't remember, he sure was in the mood for a refresher. As much as he hated to admit it, he knew she could be right because he drank a lot and could never hold his liquor. With the gun still pointed at Natasha, he looked back at Fur and smiled. We had fun, huh? He asked, his youth taking over his mind. You were the best we ever had, baby, Fur lied. All we was trying to do is have a little more fun before we part ways. So you like sucking my dick, he asked Natasha, ready to have her do it again. Yeah, and Fur was dropping it. Yeah, and Fur was dro- dropping it real good on that dick. You kept telling... You kept talking about how well her pussy was and everything. She went too far and he no longer believed shit she said. Is that right? He frowned. Yeah. He looked down and saw the Doritos bag, which held his stash hanging open. A wave of anger washed over him and instead of releasing her head, he gripped it tighter. With all his might, he took the butt of the gun and slammed it into her face. Natasha was part delirious as she was unwillingly accepting a severe facial blow. Fur couldn't believe what was happening and knew she needed to get the fuck out of Dodge or else she was next. Please stop, Natasha cried as he unmercifully hit her in the face with the weapon, crushing blow after blow. Natasha wept all with all her heart, but Tank couldn't be, be stopped. There was one thing he hated more than a snitch, and that was a thief. He already had to worry about his mother sneaking into his room 
when she visited. She was addicted to meth for 10 years, and he couldn't trust her, even if his eyes remained on her the entire time. His mother's betrayal, his mother's betrayal, he would deal with, but he certainly wouldn't accept shit from a bitch he didn't know. After all this drama, Tank felt fucked up for cheating on his baby mother, Boo. She was a little wild at times and quick with the tongue, but at least she never tried to steal from him. He made a mental note that after he took care of Natasha and her, he would leave all her bitches alone. Instead of helping her friend, Farrah stood in amazement as the white sheets turned red before her eyes. First, he broke her jaw down her nose, followed by the large gapping wound on her forehead. Tank beat her repeatedly until her body was limp and her muscles could no longer support her weight. For a moment, Fur saw her fingers twitch back and forth because they were the only they were the only they were the only thing she could move. But after a few more seconds, there was no movement whatsoever. When that happened, Fur couldn't be sure, but she swore she saw the life leave her body. While Tank was preoccupied with Natasha Corpse, Fur grabbed the pillow on the floor with the knife and hit it in the direction of the bedroom door. She tried to take something to cover her body, but didn't see anything along her path towards the exit. She decided it was better to be caught naked and alive than clothed and dead. When Tank saw her run in, in his vision, he yelled, Where the fuck do you think you're going? She heard Natasha body thump to the floor, followed by quick, heavy footsteps in, his direct, in her direction. Relying on her track skill from high school, she ran full speed ahead towards the door, making her first go. She flung it open, flew down the steps, and flew down the stairs. She could hear his heavy breath, but she didn't look back. Besides, there was no need to see the lunatic she knew was coming her way at the end of the day. If she wanted to survive, she had to catch wheels, and that's exactly what she did. Her feet slapped against each step in the hallway as she maintained hold of the pillar in, the, in her hand. When she didn't hear heavy footsteps, heavy breathing anymore, she looked behind her and saw he was no longer there. Oh my God, please don't let him get me. When she pushed the door to the building open, the cold air smacked against her naked body as she screamed, at the top of her lungs. Her feet dug into the snow-covered ground, and the air pushed her head out of her face as she ran into the wind. She was feeling hopeless, hopeful that he would be too afraid to kill her in, in broad daylight and in front of so many people. But when she turned around briefly, she saw he was now coming speedily in her direction. The brief pause he took was only to grab his black North face coat and a pair of sweatpants. Unlike Fur, he wasn't willing to be caught completely naked on a cold D.C. street. His bare, hairy chest was exposed, and he had a look on his face that would murder his own mother. With each sprint she made, he, she pleaded with the angels on the high to spare her life. She was able to get enough distance between them until her legs gave out. When she fell on the ground, on the icy ground, she hit her elbow. Pain rushed up her left arm as she struggled to keep herself up. That's when she noticed three hustlers a few feet away from her. Not believing their eyes, they walked over and helped her to her feet. When she was standing, she collapsed in their arms. Fuck is up with you, shorty. You on that shit? Customer number one asked as he allowed her to fall into his arms. It wasn't every day that he ran into a naked sexy girl, so he be, so he was intrude. No, somebody trying to kill me, she pleaded. 
looking for Tank. Please don't let him. The moment she said that, Tank rushed up to the scene out of breath but on a mission. This bitch just stole from me, man. Tank said, leaning on his knees. I gotta have her back. He wanted her more than ever for causing so much trouble. Damn, Tank, you got that bitch out here naked. Cousin number two asked. You wild and not you wild and out now, youngin. You gotta keep your business in check. They knew Tank well enough to know he had a temper, but his hustle game was sure fire, so they respected him. I'm telling you, this bitch stole my money. Tank persisted. It ain't even like that. I just want her to give me my shit back, and then she can get the fuck out. They all looked at the naked girl. Unless she tucked it in her pussy, husband number one said, then I'm sure she ain't got it on her now. They all laughed and Tank realized his mistake. He now felt he should have kept shit 100. You still a pretty lady? Husband number one asked. If it's one thing I can't stand, a thief it is. I didn't take shit from him, she yelled. He just killed my friend and he's trying to kill me too. She sobbed heavily. She held on she held on to the pillar but was unable to get it in the right position to grab the knife. The snow was stabbing the bottom of her feet and it felt like knives cutting into her skin. She's in the house if you don't believe me. We gotta call the police. The world police made them frown and the hustlers looked at Tank and waited for his response. Although they respected him, they weren't about to get caught up and no murder shit either. Is this true? Husband number one asked. Tank decided not to play games anymore. Time was was other exes and he needed her dead. She was a phone call away from snitching. Let me have her. Tank looked at all of them directly in the eyes. I gotta finish what I started and too much time is being wasted right now. Please don't she wept. She wept looking at the man. I don't wanna die. Respect the code, Tank said. Let me have her. In silence, they made an agreement. Husband number one pushed her into Tank's arms. No, she screamed, doing her best to fight back. The pillow holding the knife dropped to the ground, and she was unable to grab it. Tank maintained his hold on her and had no intention of letting go. Onlookers hung from the doorway in the surrounding buildings. But none of them bothered to call the police. Everyone assumed someone else would, and because of it, her life was in danger. With wild legs and hands, Fur kicked and screamed as he carried her under one arm like a football. The low temperature caused her skin to redden, and the soles of her feet were frostbitten. She could hear her heart thump loudly in her ears, and she knew death was on the way. I'm going to finish this chapter. Oh. Tank was almost to the, his building when rookie police of office, hmm, when rookie police officer Phillips, who was patrolling the neighborhood, saw the horse scene from his car. At first, he thought they were on some kind of drugs like boat, which terrorized the city for many years. But after watching the synthetic trance, tra- Tread a tank, he knew something else was going on. He parked poorly at the sidewalk and moved towards the building. Taking his gun out of his holster, he grabbed a door handle to the building. Tank had entered. First screens bounced off the wall, walls and closed apartment doors. And closed apartment doors. But Tank wasn't concerned. So many people were murdered in that building that to some Screens were as normal as birds chirping in the early morning hours. The officer crept up the first floor until he saw Tank and Fur on the second. He already called for backup and hoped they arrived soon. Because in his inexperienced opinion, Tank looked like a handful. When he was a few feet away from Tank, he was frozen with fear. Do something, fellas, he said to himself. This girl is about to be murdered. Freeze, he yelled. As he shakily aimed the gun to Tank, uh, Tank's direction, Tank turned around and looked at him. 
put your hands in the air. Sonny didn't move. Now. Do it now. Please help me first, all. I don't want to die. Sir, I don't want to hurt you. The gun shook hard in his grip, his grasp. But if you don't put your hands up, I'll be forced to fire. Tank dropped fur on the floor and she covered and she covered in a nearby corner. Officer, this is not as bad as it looks, Tank said, taking a step in the direction. A crazy grin rested on his face, like the Joker from Batman. I can only imagine what you're thinking right now. I'm not going to tell you again, Officer Phyllis yelled as he took a few steps back. Don't move or else I'll shoot you. Tank laughed. You got this all wrong. This is my girl. She fucking with that shit, and I was trying to bring her in the house. He looked at her and smiled. Now see what you did, baby. You got this nice officer thinking we beefing. Tell him how we got into a fight and everything is good. He turned around and gave her a devilish look out of the officer view. You know this all your fault anyway, don't you? Please save me for well, looking at the officer. If you let him go, he's going to kill me. Baby, this cop going to think I'm crazy. He walked close to the officer. You got to tell him how you got high and start tripping, or else he's going to lock me up. Tank Glaze, Tank Glaze remained it on the officer. She wouldn't want that to happen now, would you? I'm not your fucking girl, she screamed. Her knees pressed against the cold hard floor. You tried to kill me and my friend. My friend, she pointed her stairs. She's, she, she couldn't finish her thought and Tank was grateful. Officer Phillips said, move any closer, I'll fire and I'll fire you. I'm not going to warn you again, son. The moment he said that, Tank rushed the rookie cop officer and knocked him to the floor. Dashing out the building door, he was gone and under a minute flat. The officer tried to follow him, but first screams for his attention. Don't leave me, she saw, reaching out for him with both hands. Please don't go. He might come back. Against his better judgment, the officer put his arms around her neck and body. The gun in his hand grazed her back, and she felt safe. Everything gonna, everything's going to be okay now. He rocked her in his arms, and she gripped him tightly. Police sirens could be heard in the distance, and he released her for a minute to tuck his weapon back into his holster. I'm not going anywhere, he assured her. Don't worry about a thing. Y'all, that was a long chapter, so I will be back with chapter 16, and it starts off, you point, it, you point out 20 niggas, and I guarantee 15 of them prefer the red bone. It's just their way. Fur. So I will see y'all soon, my reactors. Bye-bye.